Bonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's March 24th. Wait to see what the weather's going to do today, but we know changes are coming. Meteorologist Justin Horn is here with an update on that, and I think that's the updated pollen count. Uh-oh. It is, and it's not pretty. Uh, we got some <laughs> Hide it with in. your body if you can. <laughs> uh, we got the number in about an hour ago, and the numbers jumped up. The oak numbers jumped up to 7,000. That's the highest so far this season, 7,120. There's some gasps in the studio. Uh, molds are at 1,950, and uh, it's a little damp this morning, but the good news here is that we're going to get some drier air in by the afternoon, so that should help with molds, but oak, whole different story. We are in the thick of it. Pine and pecan also show up there in the low category. Okay, let's take a look at the satellite picture and the radar. We've got some very light showers working through San Antonio, and we'll see a little bit of this over the next couple of hours, but notice the clearing line already starting to move through Uvalde, already starting to move through Rock Springs. That's along a longer frontal boundary, and once that moves through, we get sunny skies this afternoon in much drier air, so the humidity goes away. And uh, again, it's just really this morning that we see some of this uh, sprinkly shower activity and you can see some of that on radar. Let's go outside for you and it kind of just looks damp and murky right now. We've got 70 degrees at the airport with some light drizzle being reported. Dew point is at 67 with south southwesterly winds at about 6. Your case at 12 hour forecast will keep the showers some drizzle in the forecast through about 11 o'clock. And the skies begin to clear and we go sunny this afternoon with a high near 87 warm again low humidity and that's going to make for a very nice weekend more on that in just a bit but let's go over to rj now some wet roads out there now is that going to cause any issues all right justin well yeah we actually are looking at one right now not sure if this was caused because of the slick roads right now but uh, something we've been following over the past 30 minutes or so, we have a uh, overturned vehicle here at the I-37 Loop 410 intersection, and these are the Loop 410, the southbound lanes of Loop 410 getting into I-37 southbound. So you can see a lot of emergency vehicles there trying to clear up this uh, wreck here, this crash. Uh, this has blocked both the entrance and exit ramps there at 37 and Loop 410. As we take a closer look, and you can see it's also affecting a lot of traffic going north. Uh, just got off the phone with Transgat a little while ago, and they said that obviously 37 traffic moving north is being affected by this as well as far as kind of the main intersection there again traffic getting along in that area but the exit and the entrance ramp is blocked there at uh, loop 410 southbound at i-37 south uh, we move up to the north side here we have a crash being reported on the westbound lanes at loop 1604 at gold canyon so you see gold canyon is a little bit further up but it's already causing pretty significant traffic delay over here uh, by like redland road and that sort of area and we also want to mention one thing uh, uh, this uh, tomorrow is the uh, Cesare Chavez March for Justice. So want to just kind of uh, keep in mind that uh, Guadalupe Street at South Brazos will be the start of the march and it'll go all the way uh, past through I-35 and then go up South Flores and end up there at Hemisphere Plaza. So just keep that in mind tomorrow morning as you head out. There are going to be a lot of people in this specific area. So just keep caution with some of the road signs and things of uh, that nature. So we take you back outside real quick. Again, there's uh, this crash right here. The biggest thing that we're following right there 37 southbound at loop 410 south um, trans guide saying that there was no reported injuries but obviously you could see that we have this overturned vehicle so it's causing this uh, closure there of the exit and entrance ramps so if there's any more update uh, from this crash i will go ahead and let you guys know mark and stephanie back to you guys rj we would appreciate it thank you just into our newsroom san antonio police made an arrest last night in two attempted kidnapping cases that happened last friday and Saturday on the city's southeast side. 18-year-old Jorge Rivera was arrested in connection to the incidents. The first attempted kidnapping happened a week ago near Wells Avenue and Killarney Drive. That is near East South Cross. Police believe Rivera is the man who tried to grab a woman there, but she was able to fight him off and escape. Rivera is also accused of trying to kidnap a 12-year-old girl the following day on Villarreal Street near Fair Avenue, but was unsuccessful. Both victims were able to give descriptions of the man who attacked them, which led police to Rivera. This is still a developing story. We'll bring you more information as we get it. And let's look at today's nine at nine. The U.S. launched a retaliatory airstrike after a deadly attack on U.S. personnel in Syria. The Pentagon says the precision strike hit a group affiliated with Iran's Revolutionary Guard in eastern Syria. It comes after an earlier drone attack yesterday targeted a facility used by U.S. personnel, killing a U.S. contractor and injuring six other Americans. President Biden and the First Lady are in Canada today. They'll be discussing updates to the so-called Safe Third Country Agreement 
between Canada and the U.S. with the Prime Minister of Canada. The agreement refers to migrants who pass through a country where asylum could have been claimed in order to enter a third country. Modifications are expected to change the way Canada accepts asylum seekers. An attorney for former President Donald Trump volunteered to testify before a grand jury investigating classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. Timothy Parlatori said he testified for several hours in December about additional searches for classified documents at Trump's properties. He says he chose to do so in order to explain how the former president's team complied with the subpoena and how there was no obstruction. The CEO of TikTok spent hours yesterday trying to convince members of Congress that the app is committed to protecting Americans' privacy, despite concerns about the app's Chinese ownership and ties to Beijing. Millions of U.S. TikTok users are on edge amid bipartisan support to ban the app in the U.S. A court ruling in Michigan could set a precedent. The Michigan Court of Appeals ruled the parents of Ethan Crumbly will stand trial for the 2021 Oxford High School shooting that killed four people. Jennifer and James Crumbly face four charges of involuntary manslaughter. Their attorneys argue they shouldn't be held accountable for their son's shooting spree, but the judges say the couple could have reasonably foreseen their son's violence. Car makers Hyundai and Kia are telling owners of over 500,000 SUVs and minivans to park them outside. There's a potential problem with a tow hitch harness that could spark a fire. The recall affects the Hyundai Santa Fe and Santa Cruz and the Kia Carnival. Ford says it will lose $3 billion on sales of its electric vehicles to consumers this year, but the company expects to hit the profit targets it set for this year up between $9 billion and $11 billion. Gas prices are stuck in neutral for now. Demand for gasoline surged last week as motorists took advantage of spring's better driving weather. Fears of recession caused global oil prices to hover near $70 a barrel, holding off a rise in gas prices. According to AAA, the average price for regular gas is 306, down one cent from last week. Mortgage rates fell for the second straight week. Freddie Mac says the average rate for a 30-year mortgage fell to 6.42%. That's still a full two points higher than this time last year. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your morning headlines, World Track and Field banning certain athletes from competition and a controversy over identifying folks with autism. Plus the state of Utah cracking down on social media for kids and another reason to celebrate the weekend. David Sears is here. Always looking for that. Yeah, there's several out there. We'll have a specific one for you in just a second, but let's get to this. The international governing body that oversees track and field putting their foot down on transgender athletes. They are banning transgender women from participating in women's events, including the Olympics, if those athletes have already passed male puberty. That governing body also clamping down on its testosterone threshold for athletes with differences of sexual development. Here is the athletics president. There is a very fundamental principle in our sport, uh, and that is the primacy, the protection of the female category. As you would expect, there's some pushback, some coming from Leah Thomas. She was the male swimmer, then made a transition into becoming a woman. She was allowed to compete in the NCAA women's swimming meets, where she won several events. The NCAA has since changed the rules. They are much like the track and field rules, keeping Thomas from competing in women's swimming, at least at the highest level. This was her reaction. This ruling is devastating and only detrimental to women's sports. It only serves to include, exclude any women who are not deemed women enough. Trans women are women. Intersex women are women. The new track and field rules take effect March 31st. There are some new numbers out raising some concerns. Those numbers reveal more children in the U.S. are being diagnosed with autism. This is coming from the CDC. They studied eight year olds and found one in 36 were diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. But the experts tell us that those numbers don't necessarily mean the problem is bigger. Just more children are being screened. Now, this comes as a bill is being proposed in Rhode Island that would allow drivers with autism to put a special decal with the word autism on their license or license plate. So if they get pulled over or got in a wreck, police would get a heads up. Some with autism agree, some don't. If there's a subtle way to say there's somebody who has a different communication style. There's somebody who has specific medica medical needs. There's somebody who is medically fragile in the car. That is important information for them to have. But how do we do it discreetly so it's not screaming out to the whole world? 
Uh, here's one critic who says the bill, it is literally labeling us and putting us into a box rather than uplifting and supporting us. Now, even though the decal for vehicles would be optional, there are some who actually support the bill but say it goes a little too far. Utah getting strict when it comes to kids and social media. If minors want to be on social media platforms, they have to have their parents permission. That bill was signed by the governor of Utah, Spencer, Co Utah, Spencer Cox, yesterday. In a nutshell, online platforms have to verify ages of all Utah residents. They have to give parents access to their kids' accounts. If a parent does, like, does not like what their kid is doing online, they can have that account suspended until that person turns 18. There is no advertising for minors. And here's the biggie. It's like a curfew for those under 18. The sites are off limits between 1030 at night and 630 in the morning. The law goes into effect March 31st of next year. The weekend may not be able to feel his face when he's with you, but he is feeling the sweet taste of success. He is the most popular singer in the world. That is what Guinness World Records is telling us. They got their numbers from Spotify data. He is the most month, has the most monthly listeners on Spotify, 111.4 million. Guinness says Miley Cyrus is next, 82.4 million monthly listeners. Next is Shakira, then Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, Rihanna. After Rihanna, it is Ed Sheeran. So save your tears for another day, <laughs> unless they're tears of joy. <laughs> Nicely okay. done. He can't there. feel his face with us and then save your tears for another day. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right now we're at 909, 70 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A shirt below Universal City ISD teacher is achieving his dream of running in the Boston Marathon this year. In just about seven minutes, we're going to be speaking with him to see how he's preparing for the big race and what it means to him to finally achieve this goal. We'll be right back. Let's look out there with live cam. I know we started humid, but uh, maybe there was a little payoff. I went to the parking lot and I was like, oh my gosh, it started raining. I just noticed the same thing too. Of course, as I've said before, we don't get out much. Well, that's, <laughs> you guys are very busy, very busy. Uh, but yes, uh, there is uh, some rain coming down, light rain. It's mostly yeah. just kind of the drizzly, light showery stuff. We're gonna see that for a little while longer and then things dry out this afternoon. So I know it feels like it's muggy out there, don't worry, lower humidity is on the way. So let's first start with the radar, and I'll show you where that rain is. Uh, it's light, like I said, we're uh, seeing just some very light returns over the city at this hour. And then there is our boundary right there, and it's right along that that we're seeing some showers, maybe northern part of Bear County. Uh, no thunderstorms or anything like that, all the thunderstorm activity is well to our north, but a little closer look here. This line right here may produce some showers. This is going to work its way towards Leon Springs and then eventually through the city of San Antonio. So I would say 9, maybe 11 a.m. We'll see some of this activity and then skies will start to clear pretty quickly thereafter. Here's a look at the big picture and you can see we've got a broken line of showers along this boundary. But as you get further north, there's been quite a bit of severe weather this morning around Dallas Fort Worth. That's starting to kind of go away, move off to the north. So uh, most of Texas is uh, seeing things quiet down for now. But as we look at the bigger picture and I'll show you the, the front there, this progresses east today and as it does, it'll kick up a lot of showers and storms to our east and that's where the severe weather that really is across the southeast places like uh, Mississippi, Arkansas, towards Memphis and New Orleans. That's where they could get some severe weather today. We'll be dealing with the drier air in behind that front. Uh, so it will all be east of us. As we go outside for you right now, we've got 70 degrees with some drizzle still coming down. Dew point is at 67 and south southwesterly winds at about six. Roads are starting to get a little damp. And as we look at the satellite picture, I think this really kind of tells the story. You see the clearing line right back there. Uh, and so in Uvalde, the sun is out. Rock Springs, the sun is out. Del Rio, it is clear 70 degrees. But underneath the clouds, we've got temperatures right around uh, 70 here. San Antonio, New Braunfels, and into the city of Austin. A little closer look here at Bear County. We're right around 70 degrees right now. 69 hello to 69 Port S.A. And uh, 70 down there in Pleasanton. Here's what the forecast looks like. I mentioned a few showers here and there through 10, 11 o'clock. And then the skies really do clear by noon time uh, and everyone's dealing with sun by the afternoon. Now one thing we will have to watch out for is some gusty winds coming in from the northwest and we talked about the dew points dropping. Well, 
that doesn't show it correctly. I promise you the dew points fall off. It will not be, will not be looking at dew points in the upper 60s. Uh, this evening. In fact, uh, dew points fall off into the 20s and 30s. Here's a look at the future cast wind gusts. Now, this is something we'll have to watch. We'll get some gusty winds out of the northwest, maybe gusting to 30, 35 miles per hour during the afternoon. This is uh, around dinner time, and then by this evening, the winds start to come down some, and then overnight, we'll see a lot less in the way of gusty winds, even into tomorrow morning, which will set the stage for some chilly temperatures going into. Saturday morning, 73 at 11 o'clock, 78 noontime, 81 by 1 o'clock, and then the sun pops out, 87 at 4 o'clock, 87 5 p.m. You get the northwesterly winds, and then down to 78 at 8 p.m., 74 at 9 o'clock. Uh, the extended forecast, we'll look at 83 for tomorrow after starting off at 50. So really great start on your Saturday, 83 Sunday, and then a front works through, we think sometime during the day on Monday, which will cool us down some. And uh, we've got some light rain chances, small rain chances, much of next week. But uh, get ready for some lower humidity this afternoon. A great evening and a great morning on the way tomorrow. Thank you, Justin. At this year's Boston Marathon, one local teacher will be a step closer to achieving his dream. For over 30 years, Manny Olivo has dreamed of running in the prestigious race. And this year, he was one of two teachers in the nation to be selected in the Team TCS Teachers Initiative to run the Boston Marathon. Now, Manny's a special education job coach for Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD, helping kids get ready to make the transition to adult life. He's taking some time out of his school day to speak with us this morning. Good morning, Manny. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, first of all, we know you have completed dozens and dozens of marathons and half marathons, and you just completed the New York City Marathon in 2021, where you were selected Correct. to run, you know, with Team TCS Teachers. Still, how exciting is it for you to be running this marathon? Well, you know, the Boston Marathon, obviously, everybody knows what it is and, and, and how uh, major it is. It's, it's the longest running uh, marathon in the world. So this is the 127th uh, running of it. So it's been on my bucket list for the longest time, 30 years exactly. Um, and it's just been a dream of mine uh, to do it. It's always been in the back of my head that, you know, I never try to qualify, I try to qualify, you know, after that, but it just didn't work out. And now I'm here sitting uh, with the dream come true. That's awesome. Manny, we understand you've been working with students with disabilities. You're also inspiring students through your running accomplishments and that you've actually been giving away some of those hard earned <laughs> medals to your students at the end of the school year. Yeah, we have a, a party after uh, the school year is done and uh, it's really neat to put these little medals around um, our students that we have here and it lightens their, it brightens our eyes. You know, they're, they're ama uh, amazing students and, um, it, it means so much to me to give them these medals. Um, they look up to me when um, I'm out there running and, and they kind of follow me and, and I tell them my stories after every weekend or after every big run. Um, and, and they're interested. And, and, and so I think it makes them feel very special. That's awesome. And, you know, I know they probably like the medals, definitely. But you tell us about being selected to run with Team TCS teachers again. And what was that process like for New York and Boston marathons? And I understand you started working on this during the pandemic. Yes. Yeah, of course, it was canceled back in 2020. And um, I had submitted a 30 second like video resume on uh, why I wanted to run the New York City. And I was at my own stopping grounds there, McAllister Park, which I like to run a lot at, and did a little 30 second video of, of my why. And my why was the city of New York City is just amazing. Um, and part of that, you know, comes in with obviously the team that I work with here at the school district and the students that I have every year. It just, it was just something I needed to do again. and. Uh, I was selected out of out of hundreds of, of other applicants. Uh, Fifty of us had were selected for the TCS New York City Marathon, and then Boston was a nice little resume that I had put together um, that stated um, why I wanted to run it. It was 30 years in the making. Why I couldn't afford it back in the time back in 30 years ago, and um, they really liked my story. Manny, Boston Marathon's coming up April 17th, even though you're already an avid runner. Tell us how you're preparing for this one. 
Well, you know, I, I'm an ultra runner at heart. I love running more distances since 26.2. Last weekend, I ran a 50 miler in North Carolina, and I have been coming. I've been training now road, and so a lot of treadmill miles are going uh, right now. Uh, a lot of this like street running. So I'm trying to average about 75 miles a week, um, and then having a long run on the weekend. Um, but I've been training. I've got a nice. I've got my bib number already, so I've got that bib number. Uh, in my garage on my treadmill so I can like focus that's my end goal and and waiting to uh, come into the finish line in Boston you're almost there yeah. <laughs> very exciting yes. well we are told your students get excited for you when you run these big races so tell us how you're keeping your students updated and how people in our audience can follow your journey as well um, well you know obviously I tell them every weekend or every you know whenever I have a big run um, a lot of my I, I we have I have a YouTube channel called Texas Trail Duo. A lot of my journeys uh, with my wife and I are, are on there, and we just lo love to put that out there. Um, and uh, obviously, Facebook would be another social media site that I usually uh, show, you know, showcase some of our runs. All right, Manny Olivo with uh, SCUC ISD getting ready to run the Boston Marathon. Best of luck to you. Yes. We're all Thank pulling you. for yes. you, and we hope you have a great race. Yes. I will. Good luck. Well, Next congrats, time. good luck, and take a lot of pictures. <laughs> I will. Thank you so much. Thanks, Manny. Okay, so 922, folks, 70 degrees. We'll be right back. Just about 926. Earlier this week, we told you about eye drops being linked to more deaths and infections, and now we're hearing from a woman who says she used one of the eye drop brands being recalled. ABC's Rihanna Nally and Victor Okendo share her story and how her life has drastically changed since using those eye drops. This morning, one woman's horror story after the CDC warned about a growing number of deaths and rare infections linked to contaminated eye drops. At least three people have died, eight have lost their vision, and four needed an eye surgically removed. Definitely check your medicine cabinet to see if you might have any of these products that are in your home. And if you do, discard of them right away. Some over-the-counter eye drops may be contaminated with a strain of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Ten brands have been recalled, but most cases have been linked to Ezracare and Delsum Pharma Artificial Tears, both made by India-based Global Pharma. Clara Oliva is now suing the company. Okay, She's right unstable right now. Walking okay. is... Difficult for her. She says she used Ezra Care for nine months while battling an aggressive infection, which she says doctors had trouble treating with antibiotics. Oliva says doctors were forced to remove her eye to keep the bacteria from spreading. How has your life changed with your family or with work? ¿Cómo le ha cambiado la vida con la familia y con el trabajo? Mucho, 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 mil por ciento, dos mil, tres mil. One thousand percent. Yes. With poor vision in her remaining eye, she is now legally blind. She has since, with the prosthetic, had difficulties learning, relearning how to do a lot of her daily activities like walking. Her depth perception has been affected, and so she's unstable. And also, she is unable to drive. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. The FDA said that uh, Global Pharma did not properly test its products before sending them out to stores. The company did not respond to ABC's request for comment. It's now 927, 70 degrees. And the first tribal center in San Antonio, owned and operated by Native Americans, opens today. Coming up next, Tiffany Huetas is going to give us a sneak peek of the center and what services they will provide. We'll be back. San Antonio's first American Indian Center opens today. It'll be a space filled with community support services and an art gallery. Tiffany Huertas joins us now with what this means for San Antonio's oldest Native American nonprofit. Good morning and happy Friday. This rain is not going to stop this celebration. Just check it out. People here are putting together their different booths, different vendors are here. Here we are going to have a new center located along East Commerce Street and near North Olive Street. The American Indians in Texas Spanish Colonial Missions, a nonprofit, created this space, and we have Rudy de la Cruz with the Texas Heritage 
project director to talk more about this center. Good morning, Rudy. Tell morning. us what can people expect here? Oh, this is a, quite a fantastic day, a great celebration. This is our grand opening. After so many years, perhaps decades, uh, leasing at different locations, uh, Tapilam Coteca Nation and American Indians in Texas have bought this four building complex in this particular part of town on purpose to provide social, social services to the community, to have cultural arts and research center, and also to have many youth programs as, as well. And so out of this particular location, we're able to service so many people. Uh, here in our academic center, we have a lot of different uh, interns that come from the local universities, Trinity University, uh, University of Texas at San Antonio, Alamo Colleges District. And our interns come and study the culture and learn about the history of the Native American population in this area. And we kind of teach them about their own identity for many people. Uh, here we have in building number one, we have the fatherhood campaign, which does many services for the community, including giving diapers out and, and formula for families of young children who need assistance in, in upbringing their children. Uh, they provide wellness rooms and a lot of uh, educational opportunities. So this is a celebration and for everyone in the community to come and check it out. Talk to members here at this center. At what time is this all happening? Well, at 10 o'clock, we're going to have the big rollout up front where all our dignitaries will be here for a ceremony and quite a kind of a nice grand opening event. And then we're going to come down the center of the complex, uh, led by some dancing and some cultural arts performances into the region and start uh, a celebration. We have vendors here from all over the city and all over the county and actually the greater uh, South Texas region, representing many different tribes, the, the Lipan Apache, the Carrizo Come Crudo, and the Tapilam Coatecan Nacion and others as well. Awesome. Well, we're so excited to be here today. And it's so exciting because we were just here last year talking about this yes, grand opening. That's right. So there's a lot to see. We're going to bring you that story coming up on the noon show. There's lots of art and different posters all along the walls. And again, this rain is coming down, but it's not going to stop people. There's food here and there's lots of vendors. So come on out. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. And it's And the 27th annual Cesar E. Chavez March for Justice is happening tomorrow. This morning program will begin at 9 a.m. with the march beginning at 10 a.m. And the post celebration will take place at Hemisphere. That's at 11 a.m. This year, the march will start at the intersection of Guadalupe and Brazos near the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. You can find more information about it on KSAT.com. Outside with live cam, we had clouds all morning long. This morning, as the morning has gone on, we've had some drizzle move through, but Justin says this is all just really light stuff. It is. Uh, we, we are seeing some showers out there, as Tiffany just pointed out, and it looks gloomy and rainy, but I'll tell you, the clearing line is not that far away. The sun pops out this afternoon. We get lower humidity, so we will see some pretty significant changes by the afternoon. Let me show you the satellite picture, and you'll get an idea of what we're talking about here. There is a line of showers working its way through Bear County right now, but you'll see Lakey, Uvalde now looking at sunny skies. Even Bandera, the sun is beginning to pop out. Same story in Hondo, and it's only a matter of time for that happens here in San Antonio. We still do have to deal with a few more showers, though, along this boundary, and those are starting to move in along the northwest side. They're near Holotus and up towards Bolverde. You're seeing some showers and uh, this will work across the city here over the next hour or so. And there's that clearing line. Yes, it has made it to Hondo and it is working quickly off to the east. Uh, there's the scene at the airport, still kind of damp at the moment and 70 degrees. Dew point is at 68 with southerly winds at six miles per hour. Your case had 12 hour forecast. Give it about an hour or so, sun begins to pop out and we take away the rain chances. Low humidity at four o'clock, 87. The forecast high today, some places could be pushing 90, but with the clear skies tonight and uh, the drier air, we'll get temperatures down into the low 50s by tomorrow morning. And Saturday is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous day. We'll take another look at that weekend forecast for you here in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Well, March Madness is rolling in, no pressure, but we have the last two Texas schools taking the court today. It's all part of an action-packed sports weekend. David and RJ are looking ahead to this weekend's slate of games. Morning, guys. Morning. Been kind Morning. of March Madness all season for the Spurs, isn't it? <laughs> Aww. It's like, not in a good way. The Spurs are also back on the court today, yeah, David. Let's, let's start Believe with the Spurs, and I, I would say let's get them out of the way first, but, you know, I don't want to make it sound like David. we're rushing to the Spurs. We're, you know, they're still our Spurs, right? Yes. Yeah, even though they've been blown out the last two games, they're still the Spurs. Look at she, she's got, 
Yeah. You got her little Spurs cup, cup over there. there. Yeah, absolutely. That girl is one serious fan. She <laughs> never gives up. So, uh, you know, they're playing the Washington Wizards tonight. Washington, mm -hmm. Washington is actually a pretty bad team, too. They're not even in the, in the playoff hunt in the East. Yeah. So, you know, hey, uh, but, never know. Yeah, and uh, who will be taking the court for our Spurs today? I was just looking at the injury report. Uh, Jeremy Sohan's out, Romeo Langford out, uh, Devin Vassell questionable, Keldon Johnson probable. So there's, there's like 10 players on this list right here from their injury report. But... Again, uh, it's all about development, David, so that's what we've been saying. Just keep the games a little bit closer. We'd like to not see uh, these blowouts that we've been what, seeing. What did, uh, what did Pop say the other day, Mark? He said it was a... Uh, teachable moment. Teachable moment. Well, no, that's teachable. what I said. Oh, that's what we said. That's what you said. That's oh. what I said, <laughs> that it was a... Oh, man. That, that yeah. Pop said he wishes he could play teams like the Bucks oh, that's right. every oh. night. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that they would learn money. how to deal yeah. with adversity, right? These uh -huh. guys have gone to, like, class all day long for, like, it feel like they're in college. Yeah. Like, back in college, yeah. like... Yeah, a lot of teachable moments. I got a <laughs> book about this thing. Teachable moments. <laughs> a lot All right, of so what, to learn from the season. Six o'clock tonight is, is the tip off. Yep. They only got nine games left in a regular that season. That's it. Yeah. And then three home games, and we've decided that two of those aren't really home games because they're in Austin. Yeah, there getting you. ready for that Austin trip. All right, um, all right moving on to the uh, the college game here, Ooh. and uh, of course uh, we have March Madness, the NCAA tournament going Look at on. This one. Had a couple of interesting games last night, David. That K-State yeah. game, Michigan State yeah. game, was a great game to watch. Well, first off, Tennessee's done. Mm -hmm. And then the K-State game, man, that came right down to the end. It did, that was yeah. That was kind of fun. So uh, check out the highlights. We can't show you the highlights because we <laughs> yeah. can't show you the highlights. We don't <laughs> yeah. go into all that. Leave it and then, um, so, so we have Florida, Florida Atlantic, Atlantic playing Kansas State for a, a berth in the Final Four there. And I think we have a couple other scores from last night. Uh, the Zags beat UCLA, wow. came all the way back. Yeah. And Arkansas lost to UConn. So... Uh, we have the Huskies and the Bulldogs moving on here. All right, Steph, pay attention. Here we go. Here we go. There's your Texas mm -hmm. Longhorns taking on a Xavier. See, that would be pretty yeah. good. That's a 2-3 match. So that's, that's not a bad matchup tonight. I know. Who are you picking in that one, Steph? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> No, here's the better question. Are you going to yeah. stay up till 8:45 to see the tip-off of yeah. that? Well, yeah, it's Friday night. There oh, we go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's uh, and here's my thing is that I would love to see a matchup between Houston and UT to go to the oh. final four. So if the Cougs win, they're taking yep. on Miami in the same region. They would play the Longhorns, Longhorns. if UT takes care of business. That'd be so what? Sunday, that'd be a lot right? of fun. That'd be fun. Oh, that would be lots of fun. Mm, a lot of All right, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of Sunday, the XFL, San Antonio oh, Brahmas are yeah. back in action on Sunday. This team is struggling uh -huh. at one and four. They and played this team. They made some roster changes last yeah, couple of days, they did too. A lot, they did some stuff. It's all over yeah. the place. They're doing, they're doing all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they've had some injury concerns, especially the quarterback position, kind yeah. of mixing in some different guys. Uh, interesting scheduling there. They just played the Renegades here yeah. at the Dome, and then they're going to be back up in Arlington. So, of course, they're based in Arlington, so not, not much of a trip there. And you remember last week they changed the coach who was calling the plays, and they changed their quarterback to start and then they put the regular quarterback in so they used two different quarterbacks last week yeah so that didn't make a whole lot of difference they got to figure out a way to score some points i mean this is the <laughs> xfl yeah you should That'd be, be good. cranking out like 30 <laughs> yeah. 40 50 points with all the yeah. opportunities you have to score and so i'm I sure heinz you know. ward is watching right now going absolutely yeah. he, he agrees he's, he's probably watching this on live stream and he's going yeah, you know those guys are pretty smart down there they yeah. know what they're talking about maybe yeah. i'll yeah. try that he agrees he's probably sure. sitting there with pop going uh -huh, don't listen to those guys <laughs> that's <Yeah>. true <laughs> Yeah, should be a lot of fun know. this weekend. Yeah. And again, I can't wait. I, if, if UT and uh, Houston play That'd against one, that'll be a lot of fun. But got to take care of business tonight, both those schools. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking ahead. No looking ahead, Steph. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm Don't not. Just it. Friday night. That's it. You're already I, I Houston want you Red, though. I want you to text I know. me. <laughs> I want you to text me at halftime. I want to see if you're up. Uh, yeah, he wants proof he that proof. you're actually yeah. awake. I'll yeah. be up. I'm gonna, okay. no, yeah. I want to awake and watching. Text me the halftime score tonight. Text, okay. Text me the halftime score. I will. What this, if, this could be <laughs> the most awkward Facebook Live there ever was. Between the two of you. <laughs> RJ, David, thank you guys. Thanks, guys. 941, 70 degrees. You are watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. 944 groceries are super expensive, especially those healthy organic vegetables. And that's why this week with our gardening with KSET series, our Sarah Costa begins to create an organic veggie garden from seeds. Take a look. Nothing makes you feel more accomplished than being able to produce food on your own and feed your family. So let's grow a beginner organic vegetable garden from seed. We bought our seeds at Rainbow Gardens. They were relatively inexpensive. We probably spent less than $20 on our seeds. Before you start planting, remember to compost. You can find our soil prep video right now on ksat.com. And you want to add nutrients or add compost as they're growing as well. 
For our veggie garden, we partnered with the San Antonio Food Bank's Agricultural Initiatives Program, which not only provides grown produce for local families, but educates the community on how to grow food for themselves. Angela manages the nonprofit's farm, and she really knows her stuff. So today we're planting corn, basil, squash, bean bush, and carrots. If you want to keep it simple since this is our first garden. For carrots, you want to make rows about six inches apart, not too deep. Carrots like shade and a lot of moisture and can take anywhere from 14 to 21 days to germinate. The width of the seed is the depth that you plant it. When they're really tiny seeds like this, you're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of soil on top. You don't have to, and you just kind of pack it in a little bit. Remember, because of the impact when you water, that's going to push those seeds down. So keep that in mind when it comes to how deep you plant. Hey, let's plant some corn. Angela says corn needs full sun and it's best to plant them in a block, at least six inches apart or more. It's not gonna be planted in your traditional rows. You're gonna have it planted in kind of like squares and that's because corn is pollinated by the wind. So you wanna make sure that you've got enough corn so that way anywhere the wind's blowing, um, the effervescence, the pollen from those can kind of fall into all onto the ears of the corn and that way you get actually get corn. Two seeds per hole to guarantee germination. We planted these about a knuckle deep. Next, we are planting a bush type squash so it won't find out too much. These are bigger seeds, which means planting a tad bit deeper. Now to my favorite, a bean bush trio. These make beautiful purple flowers before they are ready to harvest. You can eat these fresh like green beans or dry them out and eat them as traditional beans. So similar to the carrots, we're gonna make rows for the beans. They can be about six to eight inches apart. We planted the beans about six inches apart down the rows. Remember, the easiest way to know how far and deep to plant. Read the back of the seed package, which always details how to plant. Lastly, we planted basil. Look how tiny the seeds are. Because they are so small, we put them right on top of the soil, scattering with no particular pattern in one section. Now, let's make it rain. So even if your hose is a little bit, if it's coming in a little bit uh, hard or if it's coming a little fast, you can always raise up so that it's giving a nice gentle shower. Water deep and even when you first plant, watering at the coolest times of the day. And water often until your seeds sprout. Then water depending on temperature and rain, but you want to keep the soil moist. Within about a week, we had sprouts. And three weeks later, our plants are all sprouting. I can't wait to update you on our garden as it grows. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Awesome, now that stuff's growing. Uh, Steph was just telling us about growing basil at her house. Oh, no, no, I bought basil uh -huh. and it still didn't last. <laughs> oh, what happened to it? Um, you ate it. <laughs> no, it just, it just died. died. It just it died. It just died, I mean. Well, you tried, so there's that. Yeah. I, I, I purchased it and I, I watered it and I thought the correct way, but baby steps. Yeah. Yes, yeah, baby, baby steps. steps. Well, at least there was rain out there for our plants. Yeah, it's helping a little mm -hmm. bit. Not a, lot, not a lot of rain, but mm -hmm. uh, there is some it, enough to wet the roads and give us just a little bit. I think that we had a hundredth of an inch at the airport out of what we got right now. Uh, this moves out pretty quickly. The sun comes out this afternoon. Let's take a look at the radar right now. These showers are really light, but they are there and it's right along a boundary that we're seeing some of these showers uh, right now. You can kind of see it right there on the other side of this boundary is where we're starting to get clearing and the, the lower humidity levels. So let's take a little closer look here at these uh, showers that we have here over Bear County. And yeah, you may see a brief kind of downpour where you see some of these yellow colors here, but it, it's not going to last, but maybe a minute or two because this moves right along. But this is working its way there along 1604 and there's 281 right there and it will continue to push south and east and that broken line continues down onto the west side of town and this will push through all of San Antonio and maybe a few light returns right behind that and then uh, the things really uh, trail off from there because uh, the sun again pops out and we're seeing that now Bandera, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, sun beginning to come out. The uh, sky is clearing in Hondo and that clearing line is quickly making its way towards Bear County. So give it another hour or two and things will change pretty rapidly here. In fact, Lakey, Uvalde, Rock Springs, Brackenville, Del Rio, all in the sun at this point. So our western counties have cleared and the forecast uh, does show that. So by 10 o'clock, we've got that broken line of showers uh, moving through Bear County and then by noontime, 
it is pretty much east of the area and everyone is clearing out. Now we will get some gusty winds behind this out of the west, so expect some gusts maybe 20 to 25. Right now we've got 70 at the uh, airport and everywhere else. Uh, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Dew point trend, and this is what I was trying to show you earlier. Uh, the dew point trend, uh, these numbers fall off quite rapidly uh, behind that boundary. And by 4 or 5 o'clock, we've got dew points in the low 30s, and the air stays dry going into tomorrow. So here's our case at 12 hour forecast. Just a small chance of rain next hour or two, and then we break out into sun. 86 at 3 o'clock, 87, 4, 5 p.m. And they look for temperatures to be in the 70s this evening. So any evening plans you have, it'll be really nice. Low humidity, maybe a little bit breezy, but other than that, uh, you can't complain at all. And it will be warm this afternoon. A lot of places in the upper 80s, maybe even some 90s on the map as you get down to Carrizo Springs. So warm afternoon despite that front, but it'll be a little bit cooler on your Saturday. Uh, so here's a look at the setup. There's the front is quickly moving through. And by this afternoon, it's going to be really busy across the southeast. This is an area where we could get a lot of severe weather. In fact, I think there probably will be a severe weather outbreak. When you're looking at this on a scale of one to five, this is about a four. So the risk of seeing some strong supercell thunderstorms are pretty large here from Little Rock to Memphis down to Jackson and Shreveport. But that's well east of us. We don't have to worry about that. And as we look at the extended forecast, 83 tomorrow after starting off at 50, 83 on Sunday. We will start to get some more humidity in here by Sunday afternoon. Then a frontal boundary comes through on Monday. That brings with it a chance of showers. But then we also get some disturbances behind that. They keep small rain chances in the forecast through at least Thursday of next week. Also a little bit cooler next week. But in the meantime, the weekend looks great. Oh, it sure does. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's good news. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Right now we're at 951, still 70 degrees. We'll be right back. We'd like to get you updated again on the situation down there at uh, 410 and I-37. This remains closed. It's going on almost two hours. An overturned vehicle there on that ramp. So the entrance and exit ramps are closed. 410 South to 37 South. They are making progress. Looks like they're about to write those vehicles out there. One of those big King Kong wreckers is on the scene, but that ramp remains closed and it looks like it will be for at least a little while longer around town. The only other instance we have a stalled vehicle out on 1604. Uh, that's at 1604 and Vance Jackson. We are seeing wet roads here or there, so maybe lower your speed and put some distance between you and the other guys. Justin. Yeah, there's some rain coming down pretty heavily in some spots. Uh, you look up towards the north side of town there, starting to pick up a little bit along this boundary, but around Hollywood Park, 281, 1604, some pretty uh, quick downpours here. Now, these won't last very long, and once this boundary comes through, once this line of showers comes through, we actually start to get some clearing, and the sun will pop out later today, which will allow temperatures to make it up to 87. Turns a little bit breezy, but we lose the humidity. The afternoon, this evening, tomorrow, it'll all be really, really nice. Can't wait. I I know it's a nice weekend after all the human mornings we had. Agreed. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great weekend, everybody.